project's done. Welcome to the project, everyone. Underneath me, I have our glorious FB20 Subaru boxer motor out of our 120,000 mile Subaru cross check that we love oh so dearly. Now you might have seen other videos on our channel about with like putting tires on and whatnot. And uh, yeah, it died. So this motor has some bad things in it. Um, we're not sure what. So that's what this video is about. It's a continuation of uh, the last video if you've seen that. Uh, if you haven't, go watch it. The first item of business on this or in this video is that we need to get this motor off of the engine hoist and onto our engine stand. Obviously I like kind of set it down a little bit. I just, I don't know, as much as I trust this, I mean, I feel fine standing on it. I just don't want to leave it on this for too long. So we need to get it on the engine stand and we need to start digging into it. And actually I'm probably gonna pull off the clutch before we put it on the engine stand because one of the issues that our Crosstrek had, and this is like the first car I've ever really had it on. And it's really weird, but like essentially when the clutch was warm and I would start slipping the clutch to start going, which I had to do because the cross truck has like no power. So you have to slip the clutch quite a bit to get going at all. There would start to be whole oscillations. And I think it was the whole drivetrain going like, ja, 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 like the whole motor and everything. And I think it's maybe uneven wear on the clutch. And I have no idea how old this clutch is. And so if we're gonna rebuild the motor, I'm gonna put on a new clutch cause we're already this far in. So let's pull the clutch off and, uh, and start working on it. Oh man, I don't want to jump from this. Huh. So we got the clutch out of the car. And if you guys didn't know, clutches actually have a way to tell how much life is left in them. And it's a lot like some tire treads and brake pads and stuff. They have these grooves. And once these grooves are gone, uh, you know, or like the depth of it, once they're gone, you know you need to replace your clutch. This side looks pretty decent, the flywheel side, but the pressure plate side, yeah. Uh, they're pretty much all the way gone. The clutch disc itself definitely needs to be replaced. But here's what I found. Look at this. You guys see these spots? Like here and here and here and here. Those are like hot spots on it. And same thing happened over here on our flywheel. So we have these hot spots and I think that's what's causing it to not grab smoothly like it should, especially when it heats up. So I need to do some research and figure out what I need to do for this. Like maybe these can be resurfaced or maybe I can buff these out, but maybe we have to get a whole new clutch system. So anyways, we got the clutch off. Do we wanna pull the flywheel off? I might pull this little pan right here, but then we need to get on our, our stand. Well, thanks to our lovely lapel microphones having an issue yet again, we have a clip that just has no audio at all. So instead, you get to listen to me nice and close and personal with you. <laughs> now that we have the motor out and actually on the stand, we want to get to start to clean it. Just, I don't know, I love working on clean things and this is the perfect opportunity to clean it before we start tearing into it a bit more. But the only issue with that is that we have a lot of holes that, you know, kind of need to be plugged so that we don't get water into it when we're trying to wash it off and, and all that kind of thing. So this motor does have a lot of hoses, a lot more hoses than I than like a lot of other motors that I work on. And I think that's just because of a lot of the EVAP system that's, you know, trying to recirculate everything. But there are definitely holes that we need to clean, or not clean, but cover, like the intake and the exhaust. I kind of forgot about the exhaust, but... 
Some of them don't matter as much like the coolant hoses. But one thing that does matter that I'm trying to debate here is about the wire harness. So with the wire harness on, then a lot of the plugs and stuff, they, they are waterproof. Like the wire harness is meant to be waterproof. So I could leave it on and wash it with it and things probably are just fine. But if I take it off, then I don't have to worry about getting water into the harness itself. But then I do have to worry about all of the plugs because with half the plug missing, now it's not waterproof anymore. So I just gotta be really careful about that. So I'm just trying to debate pulling the harness off. And the other thing too that I'm pointing to here is that the right side of the motor, as you look at it right now, is a lot dirtier than the left side. And that's just because, you know, oil drips when you're trying to fill it up and then dirt clings to it. But yeah, let's get the motor ready to get washed. Apparently I forgot to hit record, but uh, yeah, we took off the whole engine harness. And then I also almost stripped this out, but I had to chase the threads. So here we go. Engine harness is off. We're almost ready to start power washing this. The next step is to plug up these holes. And in all honesty, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that now. So we can take these guys off. Next step is actually draining the oil. This is where the investigation really begins. So I'm excited to see what might have happened to this thing. Cause uh, yeah, hopefully it's a bit of a story to tell. I will say I actually already started this video ish. Since we've gotten the car and I've really gotten to know how it sounds, I've started hearing this sound that I wasn't exactly sure what it was. And I think it was the timing chains, which is behind this huge cover here. I think the timing chains were really loose. And that's part of the reason why we could get some fun backfires, which I don't think I caught on camera, but whenever I would downshift, I get some little pops out of it, which was awesome. So if we fix the motor and we kind of lose that, I'll be sad, but you know, at least we have a working car. I think the timing chains need to be replaced on here. But again, the sound sounds like it's a bottom end bracket, but we don't know, or bottom end bearing, but we don't know. So let me clean out my oil pan and then we'll drain the oil and see if we can see a bunch of metal flakes in there. We got our oil pan cleaned out. So that way, hopefully we can see if any metal is gonna be in there, but. Oh, so here goes nothing. Honestly, that doesn't look too bad. There's not much, if there's a magnet on the bottom of this, uh, there's not much on there. Guys, this is a bit of a surprise. Honestly, looking at this oil, I can't really see any metal sheen, any little metal particles in there. I felt around a bit, but like, honestly, this oil looks pretty good. I did accidentally drip some coolant into here. So if you see anything like that, that's where that's from. But yeah, nothing, I mean, I've seen oil with metal shavings in it and this, this is not really that scenario. I can't really find much. So that's very interesting. I mean. To be fair, I, I did recently kind of change the oil in here. And so, eh, I don't know. Let's actually start tearing it down and see what's wrong. So now that it's clean and we drain the oil, I'm gonna take off all these tubes and just start taking off all the auxiliary stuff that we don't need, like the oil filter.
here's the first big reveal. Gonna try to take off the timing cover, which is this entire front face here. And there's a ton of screws, so, or bolts. So, we're gonna start in this top corner and move our way around. Okay, so let me explain this really quick. When I started turning over the motor, I noticed some water come out of the exhaust port. And I knew that was probably gonna happen because you know, I, I didn't, I forgot to plug the exhaust ports before I, I washed it. And I thought maybe because I couldn't get the spark plugs out that one of them I like seized up with water in there, even though it should drain out. But anyway, so I did find 14 millimeter socket did fit it, got all the plugs out and I'm still having it bind up which uh, yeah, not good at all. So that means something's really wrong <laughs> inside of here. Oh, hey, these just pull right out. I think these are turbulence generators. I don't really like, uh, what is it? PCEV like systems trying to like burn off the crankcase fumes and everything. Cause it just dirties up the motor like ridiculously. And it's just, man, it's so annoying. So at least I know these pull out now. And again, these, these aren't part of that system. I think these are to generate and help the airflow, like guide the airflow in. It's just, look at how much crud is on these things. And it's because, you know, they're trying to burn off the exhaust gases and the, the crankcase gases and all of that to try to be more environmentally friendly, quote unquote. Before we start digging a bit deeper, this is really interesting. And I think this is what I was hearing with the timing chains. So again, the noise that I was hearing was a lot like I've heard on dirt bikes where under load, typically at low RPM, the chain tension on top gets to a point where it like oscillates perfectly in time with like the power stroke of the motor. And so the chain starts vibrating and like clacking against the swing arm. And that's what I was hearing from the front of my motor. So I figured maybe one of these was loose and it was the chain clacking against one of these guides. But look at this. So this is like super loose. You know, you see that play in there, but let's see if we go this direction to where it stops. Now look at that. I mean, I can still move that, but that is super tight. So it's like the chain in the bottom's now a little bit loose. And again, even if I go back still, tight on, tight on top, a little loose on bottom. So I almost wonder if maybe that's kind of where my issues were coming from with that noise. I will say, I mean, right now, the only thing I can think of other than weird stuff with this variable timing is maybe the crank is bent somehow. But that wouldn't make sense if we've been driving on a bent crank for so long. Anyway, so there's that note and uh, start digging deeper, I guess. Well, doesn't look like there's too big of issues with the timing chain. I will say, I did notice I can see underneath there. And also I think the oil pump is, is right here driven by the pulley on the front. So actually on the cover is where the oil pump is. But anyways, <laughs> so I can see down in here and I don't see any lobes of the crankshaft. I mean, maybe it is quite far down, but what I wanna say is looking at the pistons without the spark plugs installed, this piston looks like it's, it's so like this piston's down, this piston's up, you know, like they're both opposite to each other. But these pair, this piston looks down and this piston also looks down. So maybe one of these is the is the culprit for it. But first we need to get these, uh, we need to get the chains off so then we can start like pulling the heads off and stuff. So yeah, let's get the chains off. Timing chains are off. Time to see if we can get these cylinder heads off. 
So I need to pull these valve covers and go from there. If I don't have to remove the camshafts from the head, then I'm going, I'm not going to, but I might need to, but we'll find out in a minute. Okay, so if you didn't know how motors work, these are the camshaft. They have these little lobes on here and they push down to open and close valves to let in and out the exhaust and intake. And so this is the intake, this is the exhaust. And you see right here, the exhaust, it's not pushing down any of them. And there's a bit of a gap between these two cylinders, but this side, the gap is right in between where they're pushing. So this side's kind of locked up. But here's the interesting thing. I mean, I've never worked on a Subaru motor before, but it looks like this whole, this whole system here, like with the bearings for the camshafts and stuff is actually separated from the head. And so to even get to the head bolts, I need to pull off this entire assembly. And it looks like I might be able to do that while keeping the camshafts contained in there. So that's kind of exciting. Now that we have the cylinder head off, the pistons, I mean, they're looking quite crusty. Like there's just a lot of carbon buildup and crap. Nothing looks broken on this side and they both still look connected to the crank. So I guess we'll go to the other side. Well, that was completely unexpected. I mean, I knew that having the oil there was a bit of a dangerous step, but you know, I was being really careful. And I know her being a border collie, my sweet dog, I knew that she kind of gets a, mad at the impact wrenches, but I mean, I need to desensitize her. So I was keeping her around, you know, letting her get used to it, but I didn't expect her to push on the engine to tip over all the oil. And I definitely didn't expect the poor Red Bull mini fridge to take a pretty good hit, but. Okay, now we are back. <laughs> so let's actually get this, this, uh, what would you even call this? This would be, yeah, some of these like pop as they come off. The camshaft holder, something like that. So I will say Subaru, they actually, they're doing pretty good. They have a lot of spots built into the casting to be able to like pry and get the different parts separated, which is awesome. I can't tell you how many motors I've worked on where trying to figure out how to pry the pieces apart. Cause you know, you don't want to hurt anything, but Subaru has made it pretty good, pretty easy. Okay, that's the cylinder that I think is causing issues. And uh, I will say, I don't know what it is about this motor, but it, it kind of reeks as I'm pulling this apart. Like I honestly thought, I, I didn't know where it came from. I thought maybe the construction they're doing right over there, like maybe they hit the sewer line or something. But yeah, I, 
I don't know if I've really smelt that when I've pulled apart a motor. So I don't know if it's like all the uh, emission stuff or what, but or maybe the gasket that they're using, but kind of reeks. Not going to lie. There's a lot of buildup on this guy over here. A lot of buildup. But this is the cylinder. Let me make sure you guys can actually see that. So this is the cylinder that I think might be the problem. And let's see. Oh no, it's still connected. So what's binding up then? Because again, something, something's binding up. Oh, is nothing binding up now? Maybe we bent a valve. Ooh, that would be interesting. Yeah, because look, nothing. Nothing's binding up now. Well, here's the last place to look. If there's going to be anything, this is where we are going to find it. Well, I mean, we're going to find it nonetheless, but this is going to be to see if it's a uh, bottom end or top end. Okay, so I was wrong. I mean, I will look at this, but so far, these all look pretty good. I almost stopped for the day because, uh, well, I, I don't know, I was feeling a little discouraged because I didn't see anything glaringly wrong, even though I know I heard some pretty bad noises coming from the motor. So, I mean, it sounded really bad, but I feel like what I've seen hasn't looked really bad, but I'm hoping that pulling the pistons will actually tell us really what's what's bad. So in here, I will say the little bit of play, it's hard to do up and down. So I try to do side to side and these outer pistons have like hardly any play. And these ones, there's a bit more. So I can I can feel that. Can you guys hear that? And I'm wondering, if these are, these two are bad and those other ones. So I'm hoping by pulling the pistons, we can see what's wrong. So I think it's just like this. And then I might need a special thing for this. Yeah, cause I don't think, I mean, that would maybe work, but never mind. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to pull the pistons today. Well, guess I gotta get a wrench. All right, well, I got the socket I needed. Um, it's a E14. And then it's like a, what, a reverse, it's a uh, external star deep socket or an external Torx socket. And I think that's where the E comes from. And I think I had the choice between like an E or an EP, like a Torx Plus. And looking at these, they might honestly be a Torx Plus. Oh well, <laughs> these ones seem to work. Yeah, this motor just smells bad. Right there. That does not look good. That looks like a piece of metal came through the oil system and got stuck there. I will say there was one flake kind of looking like that. Ooh, and there's like another one too uh, in, the, in the oil pan when I took it all apart.
Okay, so pistons are out. So now we just have the crank down in there in between the two halves. Yeah, we finally found, we found the damage. You actually can probably see it a little bit here. Uh, there's not really any scoring on that, but these two have some scoring on there and not as much scoring there. Luckily, it doesn't look like the crank is uh, tempered or like there's too much heat in an area. And I think that just happened because, you know, we turned it off immediately as it had happened. And so let me show you. So here is piston one, this front piston. Here's the bearings down in there. You see, they look pretty good. There is this little chunk right here, this little dot. And that, I mean, I think that's metal coming through and getting stuck in there. And I'm not sure if that's from the other ones or not, but so piston two, good. Well, decent. I mean, I wouldn't put them back in, but I don't know if that would be the culprit. So now we are at piston four all the way in the back here. And here's the bearings. They're a little bit worse than piston one. There's a couple more of those spots of like metal coming through. Eh, but you know, still not terrible. At least not terrible compared to piston number two. Look at these things. Holy crap. They're, they're like pitted out. Like I think those might be the chunks that we saw floating through the rest of the motor. Cause I mean, just look at that. And it like drug it all over. Oh. Now that, that is a bad bearing, jeez. And then piston three, here's piston three. So right here, and it's also really bad. So I think piston two is the one that failed. And then this caught junk and drug it all the way around inside piston three as well. So these bearings are also just toast. Look at all these parts, holy crap. You like my boonie hat? <laughs> That concludes the investigation on this. I figured we'd probably have to tear it down this far to really figure out what happened. I did get a little worried because just looking at the play in the bearings, it was hard to tell what was bad. Uh, there's a little bit more play in these middle two, like I was talking. But then again, looking at everything else, I was like, yeah, there's crud on it and you know, high mileage motor, but it doesn't look like terrible. There's no like smoke and gun for it. So I'm glad that we got that that socket and we're able to pull off the caps because actually I feel a lot better. Tearing into the motor, knowing what I heard and tearing into the motor and then finally seeing, oh, pff, there we go. So sure enough, it was bottom end. Yeah, complete rebuild. I mean, that that's literally what it is, a complete rebuild. I will say I still, I'm not sure what path to go on the cross track right now. Again, I mean, if we're going this far and we're doing this much work, it would be kind of nice to do stuff to get a bit more power. And I don't know if that means like, you know, full new piston set with high compression pistons and, and porting the intake and exhaust and, you know, just kind of cleaning up the whole system so it runs a bit more efficient and can get a bit more air in there and whatnot. Or if that means like upgrading it for like a turbo or if it's like a full complete motor swap to like, a, you know, a WRX motor or something else. If you guys have like any information or have any suggestions, I mean, I'm all ears. Hopefully I can see them before I've decided on what I'm gonna do, but at least we found the problem. <laughs> so I call that a success. And uh, you know, I had fun taking apart this Erector set, this Lego set, because like this motor, as cool as it is, it is kind of annoying that almost every single gasket ceiling surface has a butt joint in it, you know? Like the two cases come together and now you need to make a seal across this and across that. And then like the way that they just kind of pile everything on, like a lot of the gasket surfaces has like two or three different butt joints of other castings going together. And so like putting this together is gonna to be a bear <laughs> and it's not gonna be fun, but at least tearing apart was pretty fun. I think that finishes out this part of the project. We've done the investigation. We've found the problem. Our cross trek is dead, but hey, maybe we can make it better. So glad you guys could be here. Any relevant tools and stuff I put down in the description. I'm really glad that you guys uh, spent the time to watch the video and come on this project together. And uh, just really grateful for you guys. Hope you guys have a great day and hope your cross check doesn't blow up like this. <laughs> but until then, I'll see you guys in the next project. Bye. Wow.